Welcome again. In this session, we're going to be reading Luke chapter 17, verses 5 and 6. And this is talking about faith. Verse 5, the apostles said to the Lord, increase our faith. Wow, that's a good thing to say, you know, and I think I would be saying the same thing if I was in their shoes. Increase our faith. Verse 6, the Lord said, if you had faith like a grain of mustard seed, meaning a very small seed, you would tell this sycamore tree, be uprooted and be planted in the sea and it would obey you. Now, Jesus makes it very clear here that faith is a very, very powerful thing, okay? Now, there are many different times in, in, uh, in, in the scriptures, in the gospels, where Jesus talks about this kind of thing, talks about faith. Um, you know, Mark chapter 11 and other, other uh, passages as well. And um, I think it's very, very important to realize that in today's Pentecostal charismatic word of faith kind of circles, faith is forfeited. As, actually, I should say faith is forged. Um by presumption, okay? A lot of people don't know the difference between presumption and faith. A presumption is when, you know, presumption is actually just comes out of pride, you know, natural human pride, where it's just out of pride, you say, oh, that won't happen. Oh, that won't happen to me, but it does, okay? So you got to understand the, di the difference between faith and presumption, there's a lot of people today who claim to have faith and even they're quoting, you know, they're even quoting the Bible. They're even quoting scriptures in faith, but really it's presumption. For example, uh, you know, a lot of uh, people today, actually not a lot, but there are some Christians today in the word of faith circles or the charismatic Pentecostal circles that says, well, if you're sick, you know, just confess by his stripes, I'm healed. You know, confess by his stripes, I'm healed. You know, and I know there are... Um, testimonies out there that, uh, that say that they've confessed by his stripes, you know, he, they were healed until they got healed. And uh, quite honestly, um, there are two different possibilities there. One is um, they possibly were, they really did have true faith. They really, it really was the will of God and God uh, honored that faith and they were healed. And the second possibility is, is they, that, I mean, that would have happened anyway. You know, I once spoke to a doctor about a about uh, someone who had brain damage, and I said, "Yeah, but you know, I know people who had, who said they had tumors fall off of them and cancer healed." And the doctor, which presumably was an unbelieving doctor, he said, "Yeah, that stuff happens. Cancers just disappear sometimes, or tumors just fall off. You know, fall off people sometimes, but people with severe brain damage don't. They they just don't get healed." And I'll never forget when he said that to me. Um, you got to give them benef the benefit of the doubt. You know, perhaps, you know, a cancer will just go away on its own. For some reason, some, you know, whatever it is, there are different explanations I'm sure these doctors and scientists have. Of course, d God does heal today. I do believe that God heals today. And I do believe there were many people that were healed of cancer, supernaturally by God. Uh, but we got to be very careful that our faith is not presumption. You know, in the same way in the charismatic world, there are so-called prophets that prophesy and give personal prophecies to people. And it's just presumption. You read the book of Jeremiah, it talks about presumptuous prophets. It talks about people who prophesy out of their own spirits. It's not really the Spirit of God. It's, it's out of their own spirits. In the same way, faith here, we got to make sure it's not presumptuous. In order for faith to truly work the way Jesus is talking about work, faith working, you got to have really God behind it. And in order to know that you have God behind it, you have to be in line with the Scriptures. You have to be in line with the law of God with the law of God, yes, I'm, that's what I said. You have to be in line with 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 the scriptures. You've got to be right with God. You can't have anything that comes in between you and God. You got to be able to uh, to know God's will, 
and uh, and you got to have the Spirit of God present with you, perform, uh, performing the miracle. Or, you know, sometimes angels do perform miracles as well. We read about that also in the gospel. We got the angel at the Pool of Siloam. You know, we got different angels throughout history uh, and uh, different testimonies of people who say that angels come to them and they got healed. So, yeah, there are many different ways God heals, um, but we've got to make sure our faith is truly faith and not just presumption, not just presuming or imposing our will on God or imposing our will on a situation. You got to make sure it's truly by the faith of Christ, the faith of God. And in so doing, you got to know that what you're doing is in line with the Word of God 100%, wholly in line with the Word of God. And you got to do that by making sure that you are 100% uh, in line with the law of God and His Word and His ways, His righteousness. His righteousness doesn't mean it's an invisible thing that you put on, you clothe yourself with some kind of invisible thing that nobody nobody knows about it until you tell your testimony. No. Uh, the righteousness of God is... Uh, is powerful. The righteousness of God, the righteousness of Christ. If you really have the righteousness of Christ, you will shine like the sun. You won't have to say, I have the righteousness of Christ because everybody would see you have, you are a righteous person. Um, so yes, you got to couple faith with the scriptures. You got to be in line with the scriptures and you got to have the, you got to have God behind you in this. Okay. And it will be powerful. Yes, there are some awesome testimonies out there of what faith actually does and has done. And it is a totally amazing. You know, scientists are still scratching their head and they will continue scratching their head. That's why science books continually are being updated because they're continually wrong. <laughs> okay, I'm not saying that everything that science says is wrong. Don't get me wrong. Uh, but I am saying that a lot of things they don't understand. And yes, there are things that they say that are wrong. Once again, thanks for listening to this teaching. Thank you for um, uh, for your patronage. And um, I, I always say my prayer is for you that God just gives you a mighty spirit of revelation, that his spirit will come into you, will, will show you great and mighty things, that will lead you and guide you into all truth. And by the way, truth is not always pre a pretty thing in the eyes of the world. So... Got to keep that in mind. God bless you, and thanks for, thanks for listening. Don't forget to subscribe, and don't forget to always check out my other videos. If you haven't checked them out already, I say a lot of things in there that will be a blessing to your life. Once again, thank you.